The LS1 ushered in a whole new era of power. The LS3 continued that all the way into the Gen 5 stuff. But hey, Richard, why don't we see more power mods on the LS2? Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Oldner, and as always, welcome to the channel. While you're here, do me a solid. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Richard, where is the love for the all-aluminum 400 horsepower 6-liter LS2? You always do stuff on the 4.8 and 5.3 6-liter, you know, iron truck block stuff that's readily available. At least not, not really the 6-liter truck block so much, but the 4.8 and 5.3 certainly. But what about the aluminum stuff? LS1 I just posted. LS2 is going down right now. I'm going to show you how to to modify the LS2 and make more power. We got camshafts, we got nitrous, and we got boost. Check it out. Okay, guys, let's take a look at how to modify the LS2 6 liter. I have lots and lots of stuff up with the truck motors, 4853, and even some 6 liter stuff, the iron block. But I also ran an LS2 crate motor way back from the guys at Gander Chevrolet. Thank you again to the guys at Gander Chevrolet. It's a GM performance parts uh, back in the day. An LS2 crate motor, basically just a factory LS2 that we ran and did lots and lots of testing on. So here's some on how to modify, <laughs> some information on how to modify the LS2 and make more power. So we'll take a look at, we're going to start off the way that we always do. We're going to start off with a baseline, running the motor as kind of stock as possible. So we ran this motor. Let's go ahead and take a look. We ran this motor, the GM Performance Parts LS2 crate motor. We ran it with the stock head, stock cam, stock rockers, stock LS2 intake manifold. We did put a manual uh, fast 90 millimeter throttle body on it. We had hooker long tube headers. We had MagnaFlow mufflers on it. And then this one was actually tuned, I think, with uh fast uh, back in the day this was this was way back so what we wanted to do was run this thing basically with long tube headers the Mazir electric water pump we want to run this thing stock and show what it did the way that we normally run it and then we do modifications on it you guys could see how to make more power and we did a ton of stuff on this motor but let's start off run in this configuration with long tube headers and no accessories and stuff our ls2 produced 464.5 horsepower and 455 foot pounds of torque. This puts it right in line with what we, when we run on an LS3, it makes about 495. So you're looking at about a 30 horsepower difference or so. This is right in line with what the rated outputs are. For the guys wondering, how does a 400 horsepower motor make this much power? Well, the reality is it makes this much power. It's just that we tested it differently than the way GM rates it. We tested it with an electric water pump. We tested cold, no accessories, no air inlet system, just the open throttle body, long tube headers. And in this case, we did run mufflers but a free flow three inch exhaust with a very free flow mufflers that that, uh, that lose no power and, and instead of the cats and the cat back and all that stuff and we have an optimized tune instead of the factory tune which is kind of conservative so this is this is what you could expect when everything is right and run the way that we run it but we didn't stop there so this was our baseline with the stock camshaft here's what happened when we put in uh comp extreme energy 265 cam same one that we ran previously in an ls1 in the video yesterday so you will be able to take a look at in fact the next video i do is going to be a comparison between the ls1 and the ls2 because we ran a lot of the same components on them so it'll be interesting to see how the six liter compares to the 57 both naturally aspirated and modified and under boost so there's lots of good stuff there so run with our camshaft I'll go, I put the specs up there so you can take a look. It's a very, very, fairly small, you know, mild camshaft for the 265, but it did improve power everywhere compared to the factory LS2 camshaft. It peak power jumped up to 495 horsepower. Also improved peak torque, 486 foot pounds of torque. And you can see even down here at 3000 or 3100 RPM, it gained a pretty fair bit of power. So it's pretty easy, you know, we expect this. The LS2 cam uh, compared to the 5.3 truck cam that we normally pick is already better, but this camshaft is better yet <laughs> than the LS2 camshaft. So now let's take a look at what happens when we did some other bolt-ons. Okay, we've taken our LS2 crate motor, put a, you know, Kind of mild camshaft in it we're up near four up near 500 horsepower 496 horsepower and 486 foot pounds of torque with our little comp cam remember this is what it looked like when we had our stock camshaft in there so good gains 
But now let's take a look and see what happened when we added nitrous. Because the next easiest thing to do to put on any kind of motor that we don't have to tear into, change the cylinder heads and all that stuff, really nitrous is very, very easy. So here's what happens when we added, and this kit I'm sure is no longer available, but it's very comparable to stuff that's available now. This was a Barry Grant uh a single uh, a wet fogger setup so you're injecting fuel and nitrous into the same fogger nozzle and then we put it in a on an inlet tube in front of the throttle body you can see the photos here and you know just anywhere in front of the throttle body is fine in fact we've we've made it go into the throttle body we put it right behind the throttle body in fact we're going to take a look at another nos plate that we also ran we just ran them at different power levels but this was set up with basically a hundred horsepower jetting and here's what happened when we added our nitrous setup we're engaging this thing down Bye. around 36 or 3700 rpm you can see we're getting a big uh, hit in torque so run with our nitrous setup it added about 100 horsepower. Peak power went up to 602 from 495, so a little bit more than that. Peak torque went up from uh, 486 foot-pounds up to 615 foot-pounds. So again, this just goes to show you, adding a nitrous setup, it's pretty easy to add a 75, 100, 125 horsepower, and it's all out of the push of a button, so it's kind of nice. The earlier that you push the button, <laughs> the more torque you're going to gain, but the more potential problems you have also. Now we did pull four degrees of timing away on this thing. We went from 29 down to 25 degrees. This was run on pump gas and all this worked very well. And so if a little bit of nitrous is good, obviously more is better. And what we did was step up to 125 shot, but we also stepped it up to, not that it really is going to make much of a difference, but we stepped it up to this NOS plate that you sandwich in between the throttle body and the intake manifold. And we ran that test and here's what happened. We added even, you know, a little bit more nitrous. Hey, it made more power just like it always does. Uh, peak power with our NOS plate setup. Jumped up to 633 horsepower, and peak torque was up to 648 foot-pounds of torque. You can see we engage it just <laughs> slightly later than the previous one, because what we're doing is I roll into it with the throttle on the dyno, and then our activation button is just the just a squeezy button on the top. Wah! You can nail that thing and get some more power. And so you're trying to do it at the same RPM, but that's really within 100 RPM. So we're, we're fairly close. Because all I'm doing is when I engage the nitrous, I'm looking at the RPM on the dyno. So we're just going, wah, it's at full throttle. And then, bye, <laughs> get a bunch of throttle, you know, a bunch of extra power with the nitrous. That's, that's why it's always awesome running it on the, on the engine dyno. But so nitrous works. We know that that usually does that, and it did exactly what we expected. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we add some boost. Okay, guys, so far we've run a camshaft and wah-bah nitrous on our LS2, and we made six, over 630 horsepower with the nitrous, so it worked out pretty well. Now it's time to add some boost, because, you know, <laughs> nitrous is good, but boost is better, and I know both of them would be even better, but we're only going to run the boost. For boost, we chose a Vortex centrifugal supercharger kit. This kit was, I think, was a Corvette kit, um, included the V9G supercharger and their after cooler, <laughs> air to water intercooler. We ran dyno water through this and we actually ran it with the same, we, we didn't change any pulleys, we just ran it with the pulleys that were provided with the kit. Again, this is our LS2 with a comp cam in it, long tube headers, and then, then just the Vortec kit. We did change the injector size. We ran this thing on a combination of 91 and uh, and, and 100, and we, we only ran about 17 or 18 degrees of timing in this thing, so not a lot. There's there's probably a bit more power to be had. Normally, we would run 20 or more because this thing wanted 29 degrees of total timing when it was NA. But here's what happened when we ran our intercooled or aftercooled Vortec kit. I'll go ahead and move myself down here just a little bit. So we went from 496 horsepower and 486 foot-pounds all the way up to 710 horsepower out here at 6,500 RPM. Peak torque checked in at 610 foot-pounds. So 710 and 610 on the torque makes makes a pretty nice deal. And you'll notice that, um, and this happened uh, with the LS2, and we're going to go over, or on the LS1, we're going to go over this when we compare the two in, in the next video. But you'll notice that we were making peak power on the LS2, 6,000, 6,100 RPM with that mild camshaft and long runner intake. Well, we maintained the camshaft and the long runner intake with the Vortec, and now we are making peak power at 6,500 RPM, although 
the curve is still rising. <laughs> so to give you an idea, at 6,400, it was 704 and then 710. So it jumped up six horsepower per 100 RPM. So the peak power is still climbing as we, if we were to rev it out even farther, the peak power would still, you know, would happen much later than this. So what happens with a centrifugal supercharger is we haven't changed the cam or the intake manifold. They still want to make power where they want to make power. But what we have is an increasing amount of airflow, basically. So the boost pressure rises with RPM on a centrifugal blower. So we're running this thing, you know, if we were running at higher RPM, we'd make peak power at even higher RPM. So it's, it's our kind of artificially changing the shape of the power curve because of the increasing airflow. That's what's kind of cool about these superchargers. For those guys keeping score, this was run at a peak boost of only 7.7 .7 pounds out here at 6,500. I mean, we probably could have just run pump gas on this, but you know, we like to hedge our bets and be safe. <laughs> but here's what happens when you modify an LS2. Cams work well, obviously. Nitrous works well, and obviously blowers work well. Armature holder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.